This is a fascinating story about a couple who left the big city in search of a peaceful life and instead found a great need for the rehabilitation of wild animals, especially South African cats. Len has a vision to create and translate dreams into reality. Mandy has a special way with animals. Together, this husband and wife team have made an important contribution to their community. Our three adventurers, Gabi from Germany, Kezia from Kenya and Casilla from Brazil see an excellent example of how tourism can benefit the environment. A wildlife hospital is funded through tourist entrance fees. This is not only a tourist facility, but a place of awareness, education and rehabilitation. A place that shows people the plight of the African cats and plans for helping them. and welcome to Animal Encounters. Now today we're here at Tanikwa Wildlife Conservatory where they rehabilitate animals. So come with me, come with an open mind, tread with a lighter step and leave with a change of heart. This little house is situated at the edge of a beautiful forest. What is the story behind it? I lived in this uh, for a whole year while constructing uh, Tanikwa um, where there was no water uh, or electricity or even a road to get here. Um, the property was completely overgrown with uh, exotic wattle which we had to uh, remove and it took us roughly 12 months to remove the wattle and build the house which we now live in. In 2002, Len and Mandy Freeman uprooted their lives in the South African province of KwaZulu-Natal to move to the beautiful Garden Root seaside town of Plettenberg Bay. Living in uh, Natal, um, we had a couple of businesses. I had a very active, uh, busy orchid nursery, cut flowers. And we had a little factory that we ran 24 hours a day, making garden products, and that got uh, over the top and got to me. And also, uh, the pollution back in Natal was a little bit too much for me. And then I discovered that I had cancer and uh, decided that we needed to get out of uh, Natal um, to somewhat a more um, serene, quiet life and uh, unfortunately it has been anything but um, because we've had to put all of this together now and now we work with animals in rehab. So it's been quite a shock to come down and hopefully have a quiet life and I now work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Len and Mandy realized that there was a great need in the area for a fully functioning wildlife rehabilitation center. The ever-growing human population was placing a heavy toll on wildlife populations and the environment. In the early days, the Freemans funded all the rehabilitation costs, but it quickly became evident that a sustainable source of income was needed in order to support the ongoing costs of the rehabilitation center. This challenge, together with the deep-seated knowledge that education is the most powerful tool for change, led to the concept of the Awareness Centre being born. The whole idea of Taniqua as an operation running with tourism uh, is to raise funds for rehabilitation of um, cats in the wild such as leopard and caracal. We do about 35,000 people a year um, through Taniqua that sponsors our hospital and our rehab facilities. The, I think the, one of the questions is always why you have um, animals in captivity. And I think it's important to, to say that animals belong in the wild. But for a lot of people, they don't have the opportunity to see the animals in the wild. So by coming to a center like this and seeing animals that are um, bred in captivity, so they're happy being in a relatively small area, but people can see how beautiful they are. That gives them the opportunity to be inspired to uh, work with conservation. And it's the same with our leopard. The, the whole purpose of him being here is to give the opportunity to tell people why 
um, leopards are disappearing from our wild and to give them the opportunity to learn about organisations like the Landmark Foundation that's doing a lot of work with leopards in the wild. So the whole purpose of Taniqua is to give people the opportunity to see the animals and then learn about ways in which we as individuals living in South Africa can contribute to keeping them in the wild and keeping their numbers up. So an animal like um, Tandi here is very happy in captivity but she belongs in the wild and that's our ambition with all of our animals that come in in rehabilitation is to get them back in the wild as soon as possible. So the work that we do on the rehabilitation side is not seen by the public because it's very important that the animals remain wild and so that they can go back and live a normal life in the wild. So it's very, uh, very different to other places. We have two different facilities. One, the place where people come and see the animals and then out of sight is our rehabilitation centre which you're going to see a little bit later. Chaka and Tundi came to us uh, at two days old. Uh, what happened was that the, the mother gave birth to four cubs. Um, one died very soon after birth and the second one died I think on the second day and then the breeder brought these two through to us to, to try and, and resuscitate and uh, keep alive. And uh, this is Tundi and Shaka there which has just walked away. Um, he was almost on death's bed within a few hours of being brought in and we managed to save him and he's turned out to a magnificent animal and uh, Mandy uh, is very very um, good at raising cheetahs and we've got the formula right and uh, we know what we're doing now we've raised quite a few cheetahs um, and we will raise another two cubs possibly in the next six months to complement these two because we have to split them now this is this is brother and sister, and we have to split them with obviously unrelated cheetah. Taniqua's awareness program is aimed at the grassroots level, working with local communities to question accepted practices and customs, highlighting the impact of habitat loss and environmentally insensitive farming practices. The big cats are important, but the little cats are equally as important, and so is the prey that they eat. And we have problems in South Africa and in Africa because people have come in and moved certain layers in that ecosystem and it's out of balance. So Taniqua is about teaching people it's the whole that's important, not just one part. It's not just the cheetah or just the leopard, it's how everything fits together. And that is what we try and say is important. Right here um, where we're going to start, especially with these cats, which are quite a, a confusion to anybody because this is an African wild cat we're going to see. Mm -hmm. So remember, African wild cats are considered as house cats, as simple as that. But here inside, we're going to see a male and a female, which is a purebred of an African wild cat. It's like the little It's the same as a house cat as you know. Extremely similar, if especially, I see, I'm, I'm going to fight. <laughs> especially yeah. a female is same as a house cat, but the males are a little bit bigger with long legs. But what you gotta witness me as you see them inside, you gotta believe what the wild cat is. Okay, we're going to go inside and meet with the African wild cats. So let's see a purebred species. Can you come in? You just gotta make a little bit of a group here. They go for anything from small to medium sized mammals. We're talking about anything up to the same size as they are. Like we talk about Cape hares, rabbits, they can catch birds and mice and rodents and rats. But a medium sized mammal is mainly up to anything the same size as they are, which lead to persecution because if you think of um, a lamb of the sheep, a lamb of the sheep is the same size as they are, especially the male. That's where persecution comes from. That's why. We keep the cats here, which are very much important. As they here, they're more like special ambassadors from the world, which we mainly work with them to change people's perception. So for us, we are the voice of the predator. For them, they are for displaying, to see how beautiful they are. How would you feel just persecute them without a specific reason instead of protecting your lifestyle? So protective measures at this point, we're working out them. At a, we are at about 11th hour where we work out to say, 
protective measures of livestock are important because that's where we try to break the friction between a human and the wildlife. We're talking about protective collars and uh, Anatolian guide dogs, those Turkish bred which are quite big, mainly used for intimidations. It's, a collar is even a protection and intimidation because if a predator tries to grab on the throat and fail, he's scared thereafter. Because remember, predators, especially cats, are going for throating when they kill or in the neck. If the sheep wear the collar, it's not, they're not um, attacked by leopards. So, and, and one collar costs like two rand fifty. So that's what he is, is explaining. Now that's you know that's a, a project. They, I don't know whether they have um, yeah, invented the collar. Yeah, I think I should. Uh, one of the most compromised cats on the garden route in the whole of Africa is your caracal. Um, many are shot and uh, are left behind are the youngsters and the youngsters uh, are then picked up and uh, they then come to us for rehabilitation. You stand Good firm, for them. Yeah. as tall as you are, you yeah. not go down because remember, yeah. kids are considered as prey. Yeah. Is that what we believe? Uh -huh. Even the predator believes that yeah. this is a prey. So, so don't look into you can't, can't look to their eyes. Mm -hmm. You glance wow. away quickly because okay. if you, you Get Connects hold of the, the eyes. eyes. Someone it's has to give up. Yeah, it's you invite him to play with you, mm -hmm. or you can pounce on him and start. He's not trusting you because you're facing him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sinjin is doing well with his son inside here. In a way, they together. So he has been hand read here at Teniqua, which is giving me a little bit of a cattle now. Uh, in a way, that's where you can feel the fur of that cat. Uh -uh, don't cut that cable, so see. Leave it. Lift it up a little bit. Yeah, but he's not gonna chew it. But if it's a toy, yes, he's gonna take it. So uh, these caracals, if you look at the behavior, they're very tamed now. That's why you can think of a question of how will you introduce this cat in the wild? There is no way. That's why their future may, be the, may end up to breeding facility or whatever. They protected, but not protect completely in the wild. No, it's the same procedures we follow. We should stand up upright and make sure that we're not crouching down. Remember that the servals are the cats which were mainly hunted for their skins, their yeah. fur. Yeah, they were hunted for her fur because the fur is beautiful. It's more like stripe and spotted, which is the cat which has got a lot of spotted pattern. Like the ears are quite big, very attractive. Naturally with echolocation of the ear, mm -hmm. they can echo in any noise from the air waves. It could be under the ground, in water, or even over the lands. In savanna zones of Africa, which their natural habitat is, in tall grasslands, you find them jumping over the gra tall grasses, looking for rats. Mainly prefer the small preys, naturally. Remember that it's so difficult to work with adult people only, to change their perception at that level. It's so difficult, because what you can know is, at an adult stage, a person is imprinted with the beliefs which mainly affected a lot of wildlife years ago. They were hunted for skins, were traditional wearings which the other people, old people were used to do that. So that's why now we advise to have, to push through the educational program to younger generation because they're the ones for the future. So now if you create a change now, a kid will grow informed and knowing about the wildlife from now on. At the end, that kid, it means at that stage where they are adult, none of their young generation will do these bad practices affecting the wildlife. We also do penguin rehabilitation, which is uh, quite intensive. We do about 65 to 70 birds a year. And the African penguin now is on CITES 1 and highly endangered. And we hope that we can contribute to um, putting them back in the wild and, and to sustain their numbers. And um, what happens with the the babies is that they leave the nest and they go out into the sea and through overfishing um, they have to swim further to find their food and they get caught in the very strong currents and then they get washed out of where they would. So he either was born around Cape Town area or Port Elizabeth which is very far from here. So if he lands on our beaches he'll basically die because there's no colony here for him to be with. The leopard um came in at about seven weeks old. He was uh, a hand-raised leopard uh, from a person in Bloemfontein. Um, leopard are bred in captivity all over Africa and then released and also sold to zoos and areas where there are leopard that are necessary to go back in the wild. 
and Zwelaki came to us and uh, we've been working with Zwelaki now for a long, long time. And um, everybody said, well, you wouldn't get near him after six months, maximum a year. Um, Zwelaki is extremely tame and we walk him very regularly and uh, he really enjoys the company of us as human beings. The authorities and people that know Leopard tell us that it's impossible. As time goes, he's going to get more and more ferocious and vicious and he's gone the other way. You can't wish for a more stunning cat than that. That is, I think that beats um, any cat that's on the planet. When we saw those beautiful marabous with those big gentle eyes, we couldn't resist it. So we decided we had to get Earl. Um, and so Earl came to live with us and um, everyone says look how ugly he is but you've actually got to look at what's beautiful in him and he has the most gentle eyes. If you've ever seen anyone's eyes they cannot compete with the marabou's eyes and I think that's a lesson in itself is to stop looking at the obvious and look for the beautifulness in every creature. Okay, well this is our hospital and um, you can see it's pretty much flexible because we have any kind of animal coming in from that tiny little bird to a caracal to a buck to a bush pig. Um, so we have to have it as flexible as possible and then as the animal comes in decide what to do with it. So um, we fully equipped here, yeah, every animal um, gets a, a sheet and as we, the first three days is always the critical time. So in the hospital, the stabilizing of the animals, we spend a lot of time and care to get them stable. And then after the three days, if they've pulled through, then they go on to the longer term rehabilitation. Um, so all their medication, whatever we feed them, what they weigh when they come in, um, all their injuries gets recorded and uh, we do penguins as well, so we do some marine um, rehabilitation and they endangered species. So all that information gets collated and sent off um, for research purposes, what kind of um, worms we find in them, uh, what their problems are, what the diseases they have. So I'll just show you in this side, you can see we, of course emergencies always happen uh, 10 o'clock at night or you know, on a weekend. So um, this is Tracy, she's our senior animal keeper. I say hello Tracy. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you got a is it Z? Z? Oh, okay. Um, yes, okay. So um, so we have um, we have um, that that is a little uh, pole syringe. Sometimes we get things like porcupines and of course porcupines are um, Go if you need to go. Um, so basically we do all the intensive work in here and then from there, um, then we move them out to enclosures. Now it's very important with animals that are under rehabilitation, keep them away from the public. So the enclosures we have, people don't um, get to see them and we give them minimum um, kind of treatment and attention, yeah. So at the moment we have seven caracals in rehabilitation, which you don't really see. But we're going to see two little ones that came in yesterday. Um, yesterday I drove to Swellendam and we'll see later two little caracal cubs that Same arrived there, 1.3 kilograms each. And those now we have to raise to adulthood and then try and release them back in the wild. And that is a big problem for us. So the babies are there, they came in yesterday. What we're going to do with these cats now, they're in here to uh, stabilize and then they're going to go into a large enclosure. Uh, we use these back enclosures here for our rehabilitation and um, so they're going to be put in there even though they're so young. Sorry, I just can need, can I take this? Thanks. 
an Equal Wildlife Awareness Centre. Uh, does it look injured at all? Oh, okay. Um, and is it um, under some bush? Okay. Okay, so we can actually get to it. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send our vehicle out there and uh, we will come along with a, a travel box and we'll um, have a look at it and see if necessary we'll have to bring it back to the hospital. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. We'll be there in about 10 minutes. Thanks. Okay, bye. I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, have to... Um, Just tell us, what was the call about? Yeah, okay, basically there's a porcupine um, that's been um, caught in a trap and he looks like he's injured. Um, it looks like the leg is broken. And so we're going to have to go out there and assess it. And um, we actually got one in about two weeks ago. It wasn't in a trap, but um, its back was broken from running across the road and being knocked over. But this one, it seems like the leg's broken. Um, so we're going to need to go out there and bring it back here. How often so, do you these emergency calls? Well, last month we had 17 animals that came in, from penguins to the porcupine to little birds. So we're getting them all throughout the day and, um, and sometimes even at night. Biggest thing, uh, realizing that you, when you've been diagnosed with cancer and you go through all the treatments and you hopefully um, come back with a positive result is that, that every day you've got to make every single day count and your quality of life is so important from there on. But what it does to you, it makes you very intolerant of, of issues around you. So I've had to adapt very, very with long, long term goals um, and hopefully um, can keep it in remission. Whilst lens cancer is in remission, it brought home to this dedicated couple how little time there is left to open the eyes and ears of our communities. For some species, we are the last generation who can make a difference. I was impressed by the compassion that drives the care that this couple have for the animals in their environment. They truly have an empathy that is not only rare, but which they put into practice. It was a real motivation for me to care more and do more. Sometimes our traditions and culture negatively affect the nature around us. Some traditions actually make sense, but where they clash with the environment, we need to question these traditions and ask ourselves if this is something we need in our lives. Let's make a new start and only follow traditions that will help save our fragile planet. I think that if we understand that nature and the animals are the result of a divine creator's amazing design, we might have more respect for them. It surely helps me realize that we are connected with all of God's creatures in a special way and that we need to take care of these wonderful creatures. Amen.